Okay, I owe YouTube Chin a huge apology. I started playing this game when it first came out, and I put a few videos, and I stopped adding content to YouTube. However, I kept playing the game, and as you can see, if you look at my old content, I'm a fucking legend. Woo -woo! <laughs> Sorry, this is a very low budget YouTube channel. I have not looked at any of the Skillshare videos to learn how to add sound effects or graphics. Sorry, I do apologize. But again, I am a legend. As you can see, uh, it's Monday, and already in my division, someone has 108 million, and I have eight. Obviously, once I made Legend, I kind of lost a little bit of interest. But here we go. Here are my drivers. Right now, I'm using a level 10. Antonio Giovinazzi and a level 7 Kevin Magnuson. Tempted to use a level 3 Valtteri Botas and Sergio Perez. However, for the past month, I've been using Botas and Perez and I decided to mix it up a little. This game is kind of weird. You can see I have a lot of level 10s and the blue drivers. The only one I'm waiting to level up is Grosjean. And on my car, you can see I still have... Actually, I got a lot of the blues maxed out as well. Um, however, I'm not really using most of the blues. I think um, using three blues, three oranges. I'm pretty sure once all of my oranges get to level seven, level eight, I'm gonna stop using my my uh, commons. But that's my setup. I've been gone for a month, two months, maybe. I think I've been gone for two months on YouTube. Haven't added any content about F1 Manager. And I checked out my comments from the last video I posted and someone wanted to know about the setups. So this is my setup as a legend. Level 10, level 6, level 9, level 7, level 10, level 7. Um, honestly, until the, the rares or the epics get later up, I don't think they're going to be really usable. And that would be the pay to win part of this app. Um, I'm not going to lie. I have put in about $135 into this game. And this is where I am at. That $135 investment got me to the legend status. Um, and added to that, I have figured out, I can't say I really figured it out, but I have an understanding of what the driver ratings mean, as well as the, the, uh, different car part ratings mean. Um, as you can see, my power is 88. My arrow is 73, my grip is 61, and my reliability is 63. The main thing is, my average pit stop time is down to 3.65 seconds. Um, the pit stop time is kind of really important because you kind of want your car in and out of the pits as fast as possible obviously but I could have my pit stop t 
time below three seconds right now. However, it would affect the car's handling on the track. And I found that this is probably my best match. These are the boosts that I have. Honestly, I've never used any of the boosts. Um, I've come up across a few drivers that have used boosts, and I beat them every time. I'm not really sure how that works. But there's my driver settings, or my driver ratings, and that's my car settings. As you can see, I got three golds ready to go. I only need six points, race points to get my next race crate. Sorry, I just took a drink. Uh, some looked nice tea. And I am going to run a race. The only races I do anymore are the $2 million races. Um, now that I think about it, uh, there's no way to be demoted out of my league anymore. So all I'm playing for is a legendary crate. Which is very helpful. However, I said it in my other videos and I'll say it again. The race crates are the most valuable things you can get. If you can figure out how to set up your driver in your car so that you get at least 33 points. I'm sorry, at least 34 points per race. Uh, you'll wind up getting one of the race crates every three races so even if you're not paying to win if you just race to get the race crates and you're able to win races against your rival you will advance your car parts and your drivers Probably faster than if you just were to pay money and um, open all the green, the standard crates when you get them. I, I'm not sure. I, I can't really speak on that, but that's kind of how I feel. Anyway. Sorry, I got a bag of shrimp I'm about to fly um anyway as you can see I got 12 bucks to open up that gold crate I'm not gonna open that one yet I am going to run a race for two million dollars Alaric Barba. I think um, if you want to get, honestly, if you guys want to get in touch with me, this account um, has my name, which means it's linked to my YouTube. Not my YouTube, sorry, my Facebook account. So if you guys search me on Facebook, you can add me as a friend and ask me whatever questions you want to ask. This is a good race. We got rain at the beginning so we're gonna start on some wet and the sun is gonna come out and then there's rain again so we're gonna see how this works out Alaric Barber is ready to go so I am ready to go I'm sitting one two which means I got this race in a bag this is the view I always use cuz when my drivers hit a certain point, I know when to uh, drive faster or drive slower. So at the beginning of every race, I always uh, hit the red tabs so my drivers drive aggressively.
This is kind of a weird race because I think I talked about this in one of my other videos. I have two drivers and one of them is better on tires than the other. And Magnussen is not as good on tires. He's only going to last three laps. So, on this track, when Magnussen, oops, sorry, when Magnussen gets to the next corner, I'm going to have him drive fast to lap three. Boom. Giovinazzi is good on tires, so he's going to be able to go four laps. So I have two drivers on different pit strategies. And this is the key to this game is you're the manager of two cars. You can't focus on one trying to win the race because that's not going to beat your rival. If one car wins the race and the other finishes 20th, that leaves a lot of room for your rival to maneuver and gain places to get into position to beat you. Okay, so away from that, you can see in about five seconds, the sun's going to come out and the track is going to start to dry. A lot of people, I'm pretty sure, watch my rival. He's going to go in and pit and put soft tires on, but the track is still 80% wet. So he put wet tires on. So now the track is drying out. As you can see, the track is down to 40%, which means it's almost dry. And there's still 2 minutes and 20 seconds before the rain starts again. So, I'm going to put soft tires on. And I'm going to have my drivers drive as fast as they can. Or probably going to finish before the sun comes, or before the rain comes again. You can see my rival, his lead car just went in last lap, Russell, and put on wet tires. He's down to 14th. Perez goes in and he puts on soft tires. So in two laps, my rival has had to pit two times. So this race is over, obviously. I'm about to lap my rival so I can cruise for the rest, make sure my guys make it to the end. And that's how you win a race, especially when the, the, the weather conditions change. <coughs> Excuse me. The main thing is, is if you're on... If you start the race and the track is dry and the rain comes out, you have until the track is around 40% to change before, I'm sorry, before you have to change your tires. You never want to put on wet while the track is still dry. Ideally, you can put wets on when the track is 50% wet at 50% the wet tires are going to be more effective than the slicks less than 50% apparently there's still a the race line is still dry so uh, slicks are better i like to keep my slicks on until the track is 40% wet That way, when I come in and I pit, the time that it takes me to pit, the track goes from 40% wet to about 
100% wet, and then the wet tires are going to work a lot better. This race is about to end. He finally finished. And that's how you pretty much handle uh, changing track conditions. If you put slicks on, or if you have slicks on, and the track is more than 40% wet, you're going to be losing time to anybody that has the, the, in, the wet tires on. If you have wets on and the track is not 40% wet, you're losing time and you're really degrading your tires. You're gonna you're gonna burn through your tires because they're not meant to be on a dry track. So that's the balancing act as far as when you want to put the wet tires on and and when you want to put the slicks on. Um. Anyway, I'm going to keep this video short, just one race at a time. All my other videos have been a lot longer, and I will put this on YouTube. I have, at the moment, 15 subscribers, which is the reason why I'm adding new content, so you guys can see. Also, I started another account. Um, I'm going to start downloading those videos. I'm starting over. I reached Legendary on this account. I reached legendary on this account, so I found out that 15 people subscribed after watching a couple of the videos I posted uh, about three months ago, two months ago. And I do apologize for stopping adding comment. Um, some of you guys asked some questions. I believe I answered those questions in this video. And before I leave, I want to show you the different kind of crates that you can get. Um, the three crates, you get these every three to four hours, I'm not sure. Um, the money really helps. Especially when you're first starting, because you need money to upgrade and, and enter races. The bucks really help, because that keeps you from spending your real world dollars. And as you can see... A lot of my parts are already level 10. So, um, I get a lot of times where I don't really actually gain anything. Here's another one. I get the coins. 93 to the free engine. I only need 78 more. Awesome. That one's already full. That one's already full. There's 10 points added to a rare, and another rare gets three. Not bad. That's why the race crates are really, really valuable. You can see you get, what, three greens, and or three uh, commons, two rares. Sometimes you get one epic in there as well. You'll also sometimes get an epic in these free crates as well. But when you do, it's normally just like one or two points, um, which is fine. I mean, they all add up. Once you get to Legend, the pay to win starts to get really, really valuable or really expensive. Let me show you. I just paid to open up this standard crate, so I got four items coming. The first one is coins. The second one is a part that's already full. The third is a driver that's already full. And the fourth is one point on a rare. So I just paid I just paid eight bucks for gold coins and one asset point. I don't think that's fair. Or I can come over here and I can spend 50 bucks for one asset point for an epic. 
which isn't really going to help me much because as you can see I'm using very few epics because the parts aren't good. Look at how many points I got to make up on that epic. It's going to be like level 6, 7 on this epic part before it might be able to be used. And they're all at level 2. 1, 2, 2. Three, 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 four. See, I don't know how. I don't understand how I can have a four, and then a whole bunch of twos. Like everything should be a little bit closer, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. Maybe I got it backwards. But that's the main reason why, when you first start the game, like I said, I think I've put in. 50, 50. I think I put in about $135 into this game. And I've hit the point where either I'm not rich enough or I'm not stupid enough. It's probably I'm not rich enough to go to the asset market and just spend all the points it would take to get one of the epics usable. I spent 135 if I was trying to get this racing line usable. I don't know, that's probably 20 bucks. I'm guessing. I could be wrong, but it's probably going to cost me about 20 bucks. If I was just to sit and tap, 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 tap. So when you buy it, it starts at 50 and there's only 30 left. If I buy this asset for 50, the next asset is going to cost me 60. And that's how um, that's how they make their money. I, I can't fault them for it, but I'm not going to spend that kind of money. Anyway, uh, this is Jeffrey Hall. I ran one race, and I discussed some of I uh, discussed some of the um, stats and statistics that helped me win. You can see I have three gold crates. I spent fifty bucks about a week ago. Yeah, about a week ago, gave me thirty-four hundred uh, game bucks. And I'm down to 913. I basically basically have been using all those bucks to every time I get a green crate, I upgrade it to get them out of the way so I can get the more valuable crates. And then I use time to open those crates. So you can see I could open that gold crate for 11 bucks or wait the four hours. And it's almost time for me to go to bed. So I'm just going to wait the four hours. It's not that big of a deal. But, um, yeah, so if you play the game enough, you can gain enough, um, I guess, experience to buy parts and upgrade your cars and your drivers. But, ultimately, I think it is going to take some money to, to actually be very successful in this game like I said I just started another um, account it's EFONE F1 Ford Racing no space and I'm going to start downloading those races because I believe I am at like 30 flags on my other account so I'm really low, and I actually, I'm going up against a bunch of people who have spent more time or money in the game, and I'm finding out that my strategy, my race strategy, is actually very effective. So I think once I start putting those races down onto um, YouTube, you guys will see. Um, Again, I got 15 subscribers. Please subscribe. It will show me that I'm not wasting my time adding these videos. 
and add any comments as to what you would like me to discuss in this game so you can be more successful. Awesome. All right. F1 Manager Nation, this is Jeffrey Hall signing out. Talk to you guys later. Peace.